The National Waterways Museum at Ellesmere Port sits at the northern terminus of what is now the Shropshire Union Canal, where the canal from Chester meets the Manchester Ship Canal. On a clear day, you can just make out Liverpool in the distance across the Ship Canal and the wide River Mersey. The museum is on the site of the Netherpool Port, which was designed by Thomas Telford. This was a transshipment port where goods would be transferred from boats that had travelled up from Chester onto larger craft for onward transportation up to Manchester or across to Liverpool and around the world. Eventually, cargo would arrive and leave by rail as well, holding the end of the canals, if not the port town itself. There is lots to see at the museum. The upper basin is home to a number of historic boats and narrowboats in various states of repair. In the pump house you can see steam driven pumping engines churning away, if unlike us you're lucky enough to be there on a day that they're steaming. The island warehouse, which dates back to 1871 when it was built as a grain store, now houses all sorts of exhibitions depicting the history of life on the canals. There is a fun augmented reality app that you can download and watch scenes from the past on your phone. You can see it on that plan on the wall. The old rail took a bit of a battery through handling cargo, a bit like me after working here 22 years. These cottages were built in 1833 to house the port's labourers and their families. They are dressed to show various interiors as they would have looked from the 1830s up to the 1950s. So if you look carefully right there, <laughs> you'll see George waiting to go. He's he's ready to leave. He gets, he's, just, he's, he's right there, just, just so... He gets nervous when we leave, like, because he knows the engine turns on and he knows that it's time to go. And he goes into, like, please don't make me ride on the boat, I really want to walk mode, which means he doesn't come anywhere near the boat. I think he's doing a poo. No, he's not doing anything. Yeah, he doesn't come anywhere. We'll just block him just in case. He's not. Okay. He doesn't come anywhere near the boat in case he has to get on the boat, even though if we want him to get on the boat, he's getting on the boat. Yeah. <laughs> but he thinks just like skulking around down so there. So if I could just stay a little bit further away, you won't make me. So basically, we are leaving the Ellesmere Port lower basin, and we're going to move up to probably Chester. The Chester, yeah, area. Um, it's lovely here. The museum is so interesting. It is good. We got one day of nice weather to walk around and see the museum. We got to see quite a bit. It's a really nice place. Got to get an overview of just how bloody big the Ship Canal and the Mersey are. Yeah, and there's a bit of history about when the canal opened and what an important port this was. And, and there's some neat modern things like they added in an augmented reality app that actually allows you to watch a guy trying to manage the large boat on the slipway, uh, which was interesting it couldn't quite keep its position so because joe walked into the scene so I was trying to like she's like <laughs> she's trying to interact with this guy and the boat just keeps moving and stuff but yeah it's pretty cool that they've actually got this thing where you just point an app at it and it tells you about the history and stuff so there's all these old buildings but they've also kind of recreated scenes so there's like the workshop and the offices and then there's some like cottages that they've they've um yeah, and there's a little boat painter's office, and yeah. it's nicely laid out. Um, it's all volunteers, well, mainly volunteers that work here. Yeah, well, it's all volunteers, and, and apparently there's like a volunteer board and everything as well, so it's it's like very non-profit. There isn't that actually that many boats, and we could get told that a load of boats that were in... Too bad a shape were, were moved off to a... Um, a storage. Storage, storage yard. Including uh, the steam dredger Perseverance, we did ask about her in the, like, there's a big archives office. Um, so they didn't really know much and their system was down, but they told us this. Yeah, so Perseverance, which our boat may be named after because we've, we also realized while looking at one thing that the 1900 on the boat may, on our boat, may actually be the Thames Watermen's Association registry number, although that is so long defunct that it doesn't really make a lot of sense especially because it was defunct way before this boat was, was but it created. it might have been a nod to it or something. Yeah. So Perseverance was a steam-powered grab dredger, not crab dredger, which is what I read the first time. <laughs> um, she was made in 1934 
which was what actually got me thinking that the 1900 made no sense. Yeah. So now that I've learned about this Waterman's Association thing, maybe it's got something to do with that. But yeah, so she was built in 1934. She operated for many, many years and came to the Boat Museum in 1993 in not great shape. And she's just deteriorated from that. Apparently, yeah. It's she hasn't was... been able to be restored. But I think that's probably down to money. Well, it's down to money, plus she'd be low priority because she's quite a new boat right. compared to a lot of the stuff here where there's like real classic, you know, 100 and 200 year old boats and yeah. stuff. So, But it's definitely worth a visit. It's definitely worth walking around. There is some interesting stuff to see, though some of the boats, like uh, Cuttington back there behind Joe's head, are um, in, in definitely what we would call rusty condition. <clears throat> wouldn't really want to go aboard without <laughs> tetanus shots updated, but you know what you're gonna do. So yeah, today um, we've got another situation where I need to get to a train in a week, so we've got to head back towards uh, a no, train that is on the more central route that actually has reasonable prices, because a train from here would be upwards of 90 pounds. It's like three times the price. Yeah. So, two locks up past the museum and then eight miles to Chester. Yes, and on the good side, at about 20 miles an hour is arriving bad weather right now. Let's go. Yeah. strange top end. That's the beluga. Can't see it? Okay, that sucks. I want to get a shot of the beluga. The beluga is weird. He spotted it again and this time he was quicker with the camera. Hit silt at the front, can't go any further. So that's as far down the D branch as you can go right now. Basically that mass of reeds right there. And uh, now I'm backing up.
We're in Chester. We're back in Chester. We went down the D branch first. So the, the trip back to Chester was uneventful. I rode the whole way, which is yeah. unheard of. So there's I wouldn't no... say it was uneventful. What happened? Well, there was the me yelling, oh, yeah. look up in the sky. I was, I, I was actually really tired. So I was actually sat on the deck board at the back. So I had my foot stretched out and George was just chilling on the back and I was just like nodding off to sleep. Cause he was like telling me, he was talking about code, which is why I was falling asleep. Yeah. <laughs> Joke. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's true. it's true. And then in the middle of this intense conversation about code, there was the All like, very sudden, loud. I was just like extreme expletive. And I'm looking up in the sky and I jumped down from the back where I was sitting to power down the engine and shove the tiller to one side so I could get to the camera so I could point it up at the sky and Joe the whole time is thinking you know the I've just seen a landing. nuclear missile or there's an incoming asteroid or something <laughs> but it was the Airbus Beluga and it just so happened we were I guess we were on the glide path into the airport in Wales so this thing was coming in super low and very very loud and it's just such a strange airplane. Like, it looks so absurd that I've, I've been wanting to get a good shot of it. And we keep seeing it at quite a distance. And this was the first time where I was like, look, that's the whole thing. Of course, from below, you can't really see what's so weird about it. So, what are you going to do? So that was the most eventful thing about the journey until we got back to this basin by the D branch. When we left, Michael wanted to go as far as he could down the D branch. But I wasn't so keen. No. But basically, I haven't had a choice. No, there's no choice. We've got to go down as far as we can down every navigable waterway. I made the excuse once at the end of the Dudley branches. It was just 250 feet of straight to not even really a turning point at the end of a bridge. So, so we didn't go down that one and then regretted it because that was actually one of the places on the silver propeller board, yeah, as right. was the D branch. Yeah, so we had to do the D branch. It actually says on there, due to ongoing navigation restrictions, it's only just as far as you can go on the D branch, which it turns out is about 80 feet from the first lock because it's just all silted up and there's reeds just socked in around the number two lock. And it's um, a bit hairy because of the high water levels. The uh, water's still spilling over the top of the top gate. Yeah, there was a little bit of extra flow. My, my main thing was, it could be months, it could be years since anybody last lowered these things. So my thing is there could be a Volkswagen beneath <laughs> us. I've got no idea what I'm dropping on to. That's true. And yeah, and then the gates wouldn't fully open, so we got both of them open about halfway, or a bit yeah, over halfway. Yeah, a little over halfway. Then, so there was enough room for me to squeeze out and then move forward. And essentially, I was just like, I'll only go as far as until I actually start hearing the bow hit the silt. So that's... Oh, yeah, I made, it, I made it about four boat lengths and then the bow started to hit the hill. And we did get some funny looks and we did get some questions of like, where are you going? Yeah. <laughs> and as it was, we had to back up, back, go backwards through a lock, which isn't ideal. It's the first time we've ever done it, actually, you go yeah. backwards through a lock, so. Yeah. And it's a little bit weird doing that because there's a couple of things I hadn't thought through. There's two paddles, obviously, on, on the lock and it's a wide lock. So um, I thought you'd open the first paddle like halfway and then we'd go up slowly. Well, I didn't, I didn't, I was waiting for it to hear the water go through. Yeah, it. I and never it never did it. anything. So that, that paddle went all the way up and we're not moving at all. So then you went to the far side, opened that paddle and the water coming in shoved the the rudder over to one side oh, yeah. so it just bang but we took it really slow you were yeah. roped off it was fine and then yeah because the water level up here is so high you like you had to raise it to above the gate level yeah and then water starts going over the second gate so. and then it starts moving you were right down the bottom of the lock before you went out yeah and i couldn't get the gates open so i had to open both pedals because so much water was coming uh, that's what i was trying to say i was like i have to open it here because over there so there's much so much <laughs> Much and I was saying the sentences, but he couldn't hear me, so I was doing all these hand hands gestures. Through, and he's just like, what the so hell? So I'm just like, okay, yes, something about lemon meringue. <laughs> I had no idea. So then we came back up, went on the water point, which is just next to the lock, uh, opposite it's here. Literally just next to us, or the other side of the water. And um, we thought about going up the staircase but there's no lock people working today. We did hear last time we were here, like a week ago, that there's not often lock keepers on Saturdays and a boat went up just before us. And if we'd been able to go up with, with them, we probably would have gone up. Because, yeah, but then we'd be without water. Yeah, but because it's just nicer to be in that kind of lock, a wide lock with another boat, especially going up. So instead we just pushed over here back to basically the same mooring we were on before we left Chester. 
um, just facing in the other direction. So essentially we've just used Ellesmere Port as a turning point. <laughs> so last time we were in Chester we were like, when we go back, you were like, I forgot to mention this. Something about Chester. Oh, I know what it was. It was about the um, curfew. About oh yeah. Yeah, it was kind of funny because when, when I went to the Chester Cathedral, I just, I got told a bunch of things and saw a bunch of, of pieces of sort of weird historical information. So one of the funny things is, is, is that for something like 500 years, each night at 9 p.m. the cathedral would toll a specific bell. And that specific bell is one of the only bells still left in the bell tower. The bell tower has been decommissioned because it was cracking from the weight of all the bells moving around. But still up in this tower is the curfew bell. And the curfew bell was rung at 9 p.m to indicate that the gates of the walled city were going to be closed. But it meant that if you were Welsh, you had to get out of the city because after 9 p.m., once the gates were closed, anyone caught speaking Welsh could legally be shot with a bow and arrow by an Englishman. And apparently this law has never been rescinded or overwritten. So apparently still to this day, the Welsh are legally able to be shot with a bow and arrow specifically by Englishmen. If any Welsh people with a particular interest in masochism want to test this out at some point in the future, I'm sure you can make make some sort of arrangements. I just think it's funny. You learn all sorts of weird stuff. And, and of course, I never know how much of it is true because it's like an 18-year-old kid running a tour who's talking about it. And first thing he says before he goes on the tour is, I've been doing this for about two months. So we hope you liked this video of our trip to Ellesmere Port. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And definitely hit the bell if you want to get notifications. All of, uh, a, 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 what do you call it? It is much cheaper to fly. I'm not going to do that, but... Uh, um, Only because you hate flying. Yeah, I totally hate flying. <laughs> so, uh, so Nantwich... The whole height thing. ...seems like the most... Well, that's not so much heights. You're not you're not high up in a plane. The plane is high up. <laughs> you're just sitting there oh, talking being of... in the control of an idiot in control of a large aluminum death trap. Anyway. Talking of phobias, the other day Michael was ridiculing me for being scared of cows. And I was like, I'm don't ridicule you for being scared of heights. And Michael was like, no. And implied that I could annoy a cow um, and therefore the cow could attack me. But unless I annoyed it, it wasn't going to wasn't going to hurt me and then he went it's not like i can piss off the aqueduct <laughs> meaning you can annoy it and then i had to instantly correct myself because i do in fact have the ability to piss off an aqueduct clipping my own chinchilla yeah, which is a euphemism from brazil don't think about it too much Beluga. Beluga. probably not the Beluga. So I hope you enjoyed the video and our trip to Ellesmere Port. Sorry, I just froze. So, thanks for watching. Um, nope, completely. So, we hope you... Ready? Yeah. So we hope you like this video of our trip to Ellesmere Port. Sorry, you, last time you kept going. Sorry. I'm going to jump in the canal in a minute. <laughs> Do <laughs> Keep good humor. Keep I'm, just, I'm borderline really bad mood. I know, I can tell. You're you're a little over the borderline. Let's just, let's try and knock it out. I just I don't understand the script. Like what are we? I don't know. I'm making it up as I go along. Okay. So you're just gonna say thanks for watching uh, this video about Ellesmere Port, and then you want me to go on with? I don't care. Okay. You go you go Ellesmere Port, and you do the like part. So we hope you ready. Yeah. So we hope you. So we hope you like. So we hope. So... Oh, oh, okay, go. Uh, Serious. Focus. About to say you said focus. <laughs> so we hope. Stop it. I'm not doing it. Look at yours. We got the giggles. Yeah, he's so cute, just lying there in a sunbeam. But we gotta get to him. Let's go. So we hope you like the video of our little trip. No, it's not a little trip. It's an epic trip. D branch finished. Also, video, video on the Silver Prell Award coming up soon. Yeah. When we video, when we video it. When when we make it.